You know what's crazy is I usually stay super far away from horoscopes just because I like to, even if they're like mad accurate, I like to just kind of decide what my day will look like and, you know, and just like fall into whatever happens. And I don't like anything influencing the thing, the actions I haven't even made yet. But I'll never forget back in August when mine started blowing up. Um, I like, my friend like read one for me and like read it to me and it was like so crazy. It was like, work that you've been, you know, working towards for the last five years of your life are finally coming true this week. Like it was the most specific thing I've ever read and it scared the life out of me and I vowed to, and it was like, if you run with this opportunity and you know, put your all in it, you know, all your dreams will come true. It was like some super deep stuff. I'm a Virgo. Yeah, I do, I do, yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, confident and like, I hate to like gas myself up, but it's like a leader and organized and, you know, likes things to be tidy and in order. And uh, I don't know, once again, I don't pay too much attention to that kind of stuff just because I want to just be my own individual regardless of any, I don't know, like, you know, astronomical structure. But um, the few things I've read are pretty scary accurate, so. I'd say probably a huge, huge, huge amount. Um, not specifically, but subliminally for sure. You know, like dreams are the, the mock-up of what your subconscious brain is kind of going through. And I think if you like examine it and pay attention to, you know, what you're dreaming about, it usually has some weird underlying meaning to your life. So I think it definitely affects it. Like I've had really bad dreams and, you know, I've woke up with a really uneasy feeling and that's like a bad way to start your day. Or when you have an amazing dream, you, know, you just want to go back to bed. And I think those things definitely affect, you know, how your day moves on. I mean, we spend half of our life asleep, like definitely affects something. It's definitely my belief in myself is, is number one by far. Um, just because, you know, even when I didn't have the talent or the ability or the image or the look, I believed I had something special. And that's something that you can't convince someone or show someone. It's just something you have to know. Um, and I've always really, truly, you know, deeply believed in myself and believed I was going to do it and figure it out. And there wasn't really another option. So. I'd say like all of my success is, is contributed to the belief because belief gave me consistency and you know, consistency is the key to anything you want, so. I'd say what keeps me grounded is like the end goal of life. You know what I mean? Like I've kind of just like assessed everything and thought about it and it's like, you know, I realized that an insecure man needs the approval of everyone around him. And it needs almost everyone to, you know, worship, you know, me in a sense. If, if you're a really insecure person because you don't feel that way. So you do all these cool things and you have the fastest car and the nicest house because you want to feel it from other people because you don't know how to for yourself. Um, so I think what keeps me grounded is just that ideology is that I don't want to find my, I don't want to find myself in other people. I want to be comfortable with just the goodness of who I am and, and the intention of my heart. And if I'm okay with that, then, you know, my head's leveled and yeah. I think people should check out my music because it is, you know, the run through of the human scale of emotions and it's a place where you can, you know, tune in and, and relate and connect and, you know, enjoy yourself for a second and, you know, get out of the real world. My favorite time of day is actually always like changes. Um, I used to be like a big nighttime guy, but I've been really into the mornings recently because I don't drink as much. So night times are kind of boring. I just like want to go to bed, but I love mornings. I feel really productive after like a coffee and, you know, a gym and then you're showered and you're ready to go. That's my favorite time of day right now. Might change. Oh, I'm going to get myself in trouble here. I don't know. I'm stumped. I was trying, I'm trying to think I was just at like a photo shoot as if I like lied to the stylist, but I was pretty straightforward. I was like, I would never wear that. Um, I don't know, I got nothing. No, not superstitious at all. I don't believe in anything like that. I think the power of superstition for someone who doesn't understand it is real because um, 
it's just belief. And it's like if you believe something is real in your head, you'll naturally do things to possess it into your real life. So it's like if I think, if I step on this, something's gonna happen. And if I really believe that in my mind, it's gonna happen. So superstition is not real, but your belief is. About two weeks ago, yeah. One Oak, long night. My childhood dream was to be an artist, and I never lost it, so basically I'm still a child. A lot of weird texts in my phone. There's a lot of people I ghost, yeah. I've had the same number since like sixth grade, so I get a lot of weird messages, but yeah. Oh, doing things 100%. Doing things, but buying things is still pretty cool. Oh, the last beautiful thing I saw, oh my lord. I was at the airport coming back from Portland on tour and I was eating at this restaurant and there was this old couple, like 90, very, very, very old. And uh, the wife was singing to the husband, like super gentle, like just the most gentle, like it was like a hymn, I don't even know what it was. She was singing and he was just shed like the lightest little, t it was literally out of a movie and he shed like the lightest little tear and he was just smiling so big at her and like it was the most beautiful thing I think I've ever witnessed because it was just like I think it's the realest piece of love I've ever seen like two people like on their way out and just like just enjoying life and enjoying each other and I don't know that was really beautiful. I won't share too much of myself. It's important to you know as being an artist, you kind of have to watch how much of yourself you give away because if you give all of yourself away, you end up leaving yourself with nothing and that's very sad. So it's good to keep a, a personal chunk of yourself separate, you know, and say that just for you. And uh, that's something I can never give up. I'd say an experience that changed me for the better was just, um, I mean, the biggest change I've ever made in my entire life was just learning to think different. Um, and I think that that's a change that everyone's capable of and it's in the most powerful one that you can make too. Um, and the day that I decided that, you know, my life was in my hands and that what I wanted was possible as long as I can work for it and put everything I had for it, you know, nothing was ever the same after that. I really, really admire LeBron James. Um, that's a funny one, but he's just like so consistent. He's been playing basketball for 15 years and as an artist that wants to be great for a long time, you have to find inspiration in things that aren't always music because there's not many that are always great in music. So I respect LeBron because, you know, he's in his 15th season in the NBA and he is still incredible. And, you know, I hope I can apply that same longevity to my career.